I want to take a few moments to introduce you to the SkyGazer software that came with your text. SkyGazer is a planetarium software that we will use to illustrate the night sky in the course. It can be set to show an image of the night sky at any place on Earth and at any time, past or future. If you purchased a used text or the ebook, don't panic. You are missing out on a really nice piece of software, but you will not have to be you will not have to have it to be successful in the course. I will use SkyGazer to illustrate a few concepts that you will need to know in the course, but they will be demonstrated for you. Those without their own copy cannot experience the demonstrations on their own, or you will not be able to use SkyGazer to guide you through any night viewing on your own. The first step is to install the software. If you have already installed it, that is great. If not, use the CD that came with your text and install SkyGazer. Press pause on this video until you have it installed and you have SkyGazer open to a screen like this. When SkyGazer loads for the first time, most likely it will not be set up for your viewing location. To set SkyGazer for your location, go to the chart menu and select set location. You have several options, options at this point for choosing your location. The simplest is to use the scroll down list and select Lexington. That is pretty close to Richmond and will not be a significant difference in the appearance of the night sky. If you're a purist and you feel you need SkyGazer to set your exact location, you can use longitude and latitude coordinates from a GPS or use Google to find your coordinates. Richmond is 84 degrees, 17 minutes west, and 37 degrees, 44 minutes north. You can type the name of the location and coordinates directly in the upper boxes. And 84, 17, and 37, and 44 minutes north. Be sure west and north are checked. <clears throat> also in this frame, you can select your time zone. If you choose Lexington from the drop-down, SkyGazer automatically set itself for minus five hours from Greenwich Mean Time. SkyGazer refers to this as universal time. Select user locations in the drop down box and click add location. Add location. Once you have your location set, click OK. Then go to the file menu and click Save Startup Settings. Uh, this will ensure SkyGazer will start up with Richmond or whatever viewing location you choose as the default viewing location. <clears throat> you should have a view of the sky from your location with three panels in the upper left corner. Time, Location, and Display. The next thing we should do is set up the time. Click the Now button on the Time panel. This sets Sky's Gazer to your computer's time. The Time panel is very useful and we spend a lot of time with it. Let's set our time to 11 p.m. Uh, on current day. Uh, in my case, it's uh, August 10th, 2010. We can set the time here directly from the Time panel or we can go to Chart, Set Time. 10, whoops, 11 p.m. Okay. <clears throat> the sky gazer shows you the night sky for your location tonight at 11 p.m. If you position your mouse cursor in the center of the screen, 
left click and hold, you can use the mouse to pan the screen around to see different parts of the night sky. Notice that when you do left click and move the screen, compass heading and altitude, altitude indicators pop up to help you show you where you are viewing. These are down in the lower right hand corner. Use the mouse pointer to pan around until the compass heading is due north and your altitude is about 45 degrees. Use the time panel and select the step button and set the step time to five minutes. Notice you have many choices. Five minutes will work well for our purposes now. Click on the start button on the time panel. You will notice that the night sky seems to pivot around one star. We'll wait for tomorrow night to come through. Pay attention to which star the pivot point is. Let's press stop and hover the mouse pointer over that star. Skygazer reveals that this is our north star, Polaris. The time panel feature is a very powerful aid for us to see long-term movements and patterns in the night sky. It essentially plays a movie of the sky at any speed we want by selecting the appropriate time step. By using the start and stop buttons we can control the motion and we can also go backwards or forwards by using the direction buttons. This would be backwards, this would be forwards. Uh, the barred buttons advance one, one time step in either direction. Once you have finished, you can click the Now button to return to your current time. <clears throat> Set the time to convenient nighttime sky for your current date. I will choose 10 p.m. on uh, August the 10th. Click on the Display menu. You have many choices for objects to, dis to display. Skygazer defaults are usually what we need, but you can turn on and off different features to assist you in finding different objects. Go to Planets and make sure Show Planets and Moon is checked. It is. You can also select specific details and moons you wish to view. The defaults are fine for now. There's several different options here. Use the mouse to pan around to find Pluto, Neptune, Venus, Mars, and Saturn. Now these will only be visible if you choose August the 10th or something very near at 2010. Center Saturn in the window. We'll do that by left clicking and panning. Actually, Saturn's very low, so let's uh, see what direction are we facing. We're facing west, so Saturn is about to step. I changed my time just then to 9.25 p.m. to get Saturn a little higher up in the night sky. Click on the plus button in the lower left-hand corner. Left click and pan to keep Saturn relatively centered. Uh, I have lost Saturn. Keep clicking on the plus button. Keep panning around to keep it centered. Plus some more. As you can see, Saturn has several moons. Also, you can see how powerful Skygazer is, and you can use it to zoom in on any object in the sky. 
However, only certain objects like planets, galaxies, and nebulae will be appealing to view. Stars that are many light years away will always just look like stars if you zoom in on them. Click on this box down here on the lower left and click on 120 to zoom back out to your starting point. Let's explore a few more display settings and look at a deep sky object. Go to the display menu, select deep sky objects, click show deep sky objects, and this will turn on boundaries around deep sky objects. Next go to display, colors, and grid lines. Display, colors, grid lines. Select constellation lines and select a lighter shade of blue, then click OK. Constellation lines, lighter shade of blue, OK. Step forward in time until we get the constellation, get it dark enough for the constellations to show up, and use the mouse to pan around to find the Andromeda constellation it will be in the northeast. Go to the display, labels, and turn on the constellation labels. And you'll see right here is Andromeda. You will notice in the Andromeda constellation a deep sky object right here this oval if you hover the mouse pointer over it you will see it's the Andromeda galaxy center it in your screen like we did with Saturn and zoom in And there you have a close-up view of the Andromeda galaxy if you looked at it through a telescope. Use this box 120 and zoom back out. If you have a small telescope, you may, you may want to look for some of the planets or deep sky objects. You can use Skygazer to pick out a date and time and location to represent your current night sky and then use the stars of the constellation as a guide to your search. In the case of Andromeda Galaxy, we can use the two stars of uh, Cephas to form an imaginary line. <coughs> These two stars of Cephas to form an imaginary line down straight through the Andromeda Galaxy, and then a horizontal line across from uh, here, Alpha Rites, to intersect right in the center of the uh, Andromeda Galaxy. That would be the area to search with your telescope. Planets are much easier and Saturn makes for spectacular viewing. However, Saturn is setting on uh, August the 10th and will soon be below the horizon. So let's turn off uh, on our display settings the deep sky objects by clicking and let's set the date for July 31 and we'll look at about 10 o'clock and let's look for Saturn. We'll use our mouse and pan around and I want to show you how you can use <coughs> the constellations to help find uh, nighttime objects. On this day, Saturn is located in the constellation Virgo. It's near the western horizon. You can tell that by looking at our, uh, our horizon indicator right hand corner and so you would look to the southwest near the horizon find the constellation Virgo 
and let's pan around a little this way I'm looking for yeah there we go here you will find the asterism you may know as the Big Dipper you can use these two stars in the cup of the Big Dipper to form an imaginary line down to the area where you have Venus, Saturn, and Mars. And that's how you use Skygazer to find things in the night sky to locate. You find a constellation you know. Usually you can find the Big Dipper very easily. Use it or compass headings to get you in the general vicinity and then find uh, constellations and, and develop pointer stars to guide you into the object you're wanting to see. In the case of planets, they're going to be very bright. Now, depending on the time of year you're, you're viewing, Saturn uh, may or may not be uh, above the horizon for your location, but usually Saturn, Mars, Venus, or Jupiter uh, will be viewable within two or three months of the year. So, this concludes our introduction to Skygazer. I encourage you to experiment with it as we have just barely touched the surface of its ability. If you truly want to unlock its secret, the user guide is located up here. And it's very thorough and has uh, many, many, many more features than we have just went through. If you're an amateur astronomer and have a telescope and are wanting to view the night sky, this is an excellent piece of software to get you started in the right direction.